Former President Donald Trump today, again, referring to the conflict as a possible World War III. Short time ago, Iran launched 181 ballistic missiles at Israel, and uh, we, we it just, it's, I've been talking about World War III for a long time, and I don't want to make predictions because the predictions always come true. We're not going to make, but they are very close to global catastrophe. We have a non-existent president and a non-existent vice president who should be in charge, but nobody knows what's going on. In northern Israel, it was clear this attack was different. No! You! 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 This is, uh, this is, this is tough now. Right now in October, the world seems like it's falling apart. Uh, yeah, it's not just this, it's the longshoremen, it's the economy, it's the, everything's going up. Okay, and to that point, an escalation that draws the U.S. in, might that be uh, an issue where we could see the U.S. going after Iran's nuclear program? We know that that has been a thorn uh, in uh, the Biden administration's side for some time now. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, guys, we got to get off the roof. These are coming down right next to us here. Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu vowing to retaliate against Iran for the attack. But, you know, Israel has not had an attack like this from Iran in its history. And the mood of defiance there you heard from Benjamin Netanyahu suggests that Israel is going to respond with force. It's another incredibly dangerous moment in a conflict now which has lasted almost exactly a year and is spreading across the Middle East. Iran says it was in retaliation for the assassinations of the leaders of Hezbollah and Hamas in recent weeks. And as Israeli air defenses were fending off the missile attack, a shooting on the ground in Tel Aviv has left eight people dead and nine people wounded. At least one shooter reportedly got off of mass transit and opened fire using a semi-automatic rifle. The United States played an active role in Israel's defense. The country says 90 percent of those missiles hit their targets. The U.S. confirming our forces helped to defend against the attack. And again, this is significant because it is the first time, according to Iranian state television, that the Iranians used the Fatah 4 hypersonic ballistic missile. Back in April, when Iran attacked Israel, they didn't use hypersonic ballistic missiles of this caliber, the latest that they have in their arsenal. And the military says that there have been other strikes, but as far as we know, in a very sad irony, the only person killed uh, was a Palestinian from Gaza who happened to be in the West Bank. Uh, and not, uh, we're not really sure how, how he died, but certainly the amount of shrapnel flying around was lethal. We'll have uh, more details on that tomorrow. Okay, Liz Palmer, thank you for that account. We can feel the tension in your counting there. Let's just hear, listen into what's happening in Jerusalem right now. And as Brett talked about, the real concern here for Israel is that Iran is getting closer and closer to their development of a nuclear weapon. International watchdogs have indicated that Iranian nuclear facilities are enriching uranium closer to weapons grade material. And this gives them a much shorter breakout time to produce a nuclear bomb. I have one word, don't. What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't, 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 don't. Don't, don't, don't. And what's the message to Iran? Don't. And Israel may be now launching a limited <clears throat> operation into Lebanon. Are you aware of that? Are you comfortable with their plans? I'm more you know. aware than you might know, and I'm comfortable with them stopping. Look, Sandra, people need to go back and listen to what Benjamin Netanyahu said just last week with the UN General Assembly. 
He talked about it in biblical terms when he talked about Iran and he talked about Moses and he talked about appeasement and that appeasement must end. He was talking about Iran. The United States has an opportunity to really leverage this and bring some type of peace to the region and also work in concert with other allies in the region, with the Saudis as well. But this is on Israel and that's the reason why I'm saying we shouldn't let them fight alone because the question is when does it end? And that's the reason I keep going back to what Netanyahu said. He has said it repeatedly. He looks at this in biblical fashion that this is a fight to the end and there's a, this is a fight for between good and evil and this is a fight to the finish. And we should acknowledge that. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we talk in diplo speak and we think, okay, well, this is going to be okay. This is, we need to have a ceasefire. No, that's not going to happen. This is actually going to be a fight to the finish between good and evil. We are looking at pictures right now. Oh, we are looking picture, at pictures of Tel Aviv, what you're describing. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Oh, God. Okay, guys, we got to get off the roof. These are coming down right next to us here. Please do, Jim. Please do. They're coming down. One just about. We got to go inside. The IDF intercepted most of these missiles, but some have landed in central and southern Israel. Dramatic scenes playing out across the skies tonight.